Alrighty y'all, today we're going to be making a stand so that you can display your knives in your home or office. As many of y'all know, I recently finished up a very long and arduous Viking build challenge and I want to be able to show off this knife. It's not the only one, there are other knives that I've recently done for challenge builds that are just sitting in my safe and it would be nice to be able to put them on display. First thing to do is to make a 3D model in Fusion 360 and I'm going to go through all the steps on how to do that. Then we'll be using the 3D printer to print out our stand and test it. However, if you don't have a 3D printer, you can utilize some 3D printing services online with these files. So we have a blank sheet in Fusion 360. First thing we need to do here is create a sketch. We'll do it on the front plane and we're going to be drawing at the base plate. Now, my printer can only do 256 millimeters, which is around 10 inches. So on longer blades, uh, we're going to use two base plates and we'll connect the base plates together with dowel pins. On the main base plate, I'll have a pillar and that's the one that we'll start off with here. It's going to be 10 inches long uh, and then the other base plate, I'll have to take some measurements to figure out where I want the tip of the blade to rest. So we're going to go to the rectangle here, click on the origin point. We want this to be 10 inches long and a quarter inch tall. On the blade side, we're going to go with five and a quarter. So I'm going to do it about an inch away from this first plate. 5.25 by a quarter inch. Okay. We have our two rectangles here. I want to hit finish sketch. I'm holding the shift button and my mouse middle key or middle uh, roller that allows me to pan here into 3D. And then we're going to select both rectangles, hit the extrude button, and then we're going to expand these or extrude these uh, by 2.5 inches. Next thing we're going to focus on is the pillar. Uh, so in order to get the pillar where I want it, we're going to do another sketch. So I'm going to expand the sketches here. You can see we have one sketch. Uh, so you can name the sketches to kind of keep you, keep you on the right path. So I'm going to name this one base plates. All right, we're going to create a new sketch on top of this 10 inch base plate here. I'm going to click the top of the base plate. All right. So we have another sketch. I'm going to select the midpoint, come out four inches, and then we'll put the edge of the pillar about right there. I want my pillar to be around 1.2 inches in width. It's going to be a square. So so in order to get that, I'm just going to draw some lines. So 0.6 would be half of that. And then 1.2 by 1.2. There's my square. Okay. I'm going to hit finish sketch. I'm going to select this square. I'm going to extrude the square upwards. I'm going to make this pillar about 2.5 inches. I have measured this on the side, uh, so I'm not just guessing here. Then I'm going to hit enter. Not only do I want my knife to sit into the pillar like a U, I want it to be slightly tilted back so that it displays the knife better uh, to the person looking at the stand. Uh, so we're about to do the cutout for this pillar to allow the knife to sit into it. All right, so on the pillar here, we're going to make a new sketch. Before we do so, we're going to label the old one. Pillar base. We'll make a new sketch on this face of the pillar. All right. I want to have about a 10 degree drop in the back. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and draw a line through here. 10 degrees feels, feels about right. Maybe eight. Uh, yeah, you know, I'm going to go with six. That feels, that feels better. Six degree line. Okay. When it comes to the height, I'm coming down from the top. I'm going to take some guesses here. Maybe something like that. All right. Yep. And you can eyeball a lot of this stuff. Uh, this doesn't need to be to an exact measurement. I'm going to draw a perpendicular line here, perpendicular to the six degree line we just drew. I'm going to draw two actually. Okay, and you can move these guys around. I'll probably do something like this. 
over here and then over here I'll move this around like eh, something like that. The distance between these two is important so I'm going to measure. Let's see what we got here. That's a little small. I want to get that to around 0.9. I'm just going to bring these a little, little closer here, a little closer there. Let's see what it looks like now. It's about 0.91. I'm happy with that. Uh, what else do we need to do? I'm going to draw, let's see, I'm going to draw a line coming in here. And the reason I'm doing this is because the front of the pillar, this U-shaped box that we're making, uh, doesn't need to be as high in the front. Otherwise, it would cover up that part of the handle. It just needs to be a little ledge. So we're going to put that little ledge about right there, a little less than halfway up. And then what we're going to do is kind of just draw a box around the space that we want to cut out. Because this is, this is going to allow for us to cut the pillar. I'm just going to come up real high over here. I'll maybe just connect it there. Then I'll trim, uh, I'll trim this piece off just to clean it up a little bit. Yeah, so this section right here is what we're going to be cutting. Now you can hit Finish Sketch. We're close to cutting out the pillar. However, you don't want to just cut it straight because your knife is going to be sitting there at an angle. So what we really want is we want this guy to cut through the pillar at an angle to around here. In order to do that, we're going to sweep it along a path. So we're going to create a path to sweep this guy uh, on, on, the, on the front plane. We've been working on the right plane here. We're going to make it across the front plane. To do that, we will first start off by uh, creating a new sketch. We'll do it on this plane in the pillar. But what I like to do is I want to grab the corner of our previous sketch. So we'll rotate it here. You see this corner right there? I'm going to grab that. All right. Now, you got to take into account we have an inch between these two pieces. So if we want the, I guess, tip of the knife to land somewhere around here, uh, we probably just need to come an inch back. So we'll put it right there. All right, one thing I don't like about this is it did draw it in an angle. Uh, so I wonder if I can move this. Yeah, kind of like that. I'm sure there's a better way to do that, but uh, I think this is going to get the job done for what we're trying to accomplish. Let's say finish sketch. So I'm going to label that. Sweet path. Label this one uh, pillar cut. So now. It's time to cut the pillar. In order to do that, uh, it's a little easier to select stuff if you turn the bodies off, which didn't seem to matter in this case. It's still hard to select, so I'm just going to go ahead and select these two pieces. Turn the bodies back on. Come over here to create. There is a sweep option. So I have the two profiles that I want to sweep selected. I'm then going to hit path. And that path is going to be this line right here. And you can see that we are cutting through our pillar at an angle and it's doing pretty much what we wanted to do one thing i'll say is that uh, we have a little piece right here that is uh, not being cut so in order to fix that i'm going to hit cancel i'm going to come back to our pillar cutout i'm going to edit i'm just going to make all this taller uh, let's see i'll edit it from the other side just to keep it the same as it was yeah, we're just going to bring this all the way up like that. Hit finish sketch. And then we're going to try this again. Select here, select here. Create. Sweep. Here's my sweeping path. Also, I don't want it cutting into this, this plate up over here. So I'm going to drag this back a little bit. It doesn't need to cut all the way along the path. And you can see we have a nice angle in our pillar now. And an angle that is slightly tilted backwards as well. That's perfect. Okay, now we're gonna hit OK. There's our pillar. Now I'm going to try to make this pillar look a little better because it looks pretty ugly at this point. It's just a square pillar, which would work fine if that's what you're going for. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and make some cutouts on this pillar. I'm gonna select this plane. We'll make a sketch here. Well, you know, this stuff doesn't need to be perfect, what we're about to do, but this will make it look cooler. Make a center line. And uh, maybe uh, 
an arc here. Something like that. I want to mirror this arc that I just made onto the other side. Let me turn the bodies off real fast. I've got this selected. I hit mirror. Cool. Selecting my center line. There it is. Hit OK. I'm going to add a slot. One thing about these slots, if we're going to be 3D printing, is this rounded surface here, the printers seem to have a harder time with, so I'm going to draw some straight lines at the top. Now that we have uh, these cutouts, let's hit Finish Sketch. I'm going to select all of this. Extrude. We'll go this way. See how it looks now. <laughs> you can see we kind of put uh, that top slot a little too high, which we'll fix that in a second. But that's pretty much what it looks like, so I like it. I'm going to hit OK. Uh, to fix the slot issue, we'll come back to here. I'm going to label this while we're here. Cutouts. And then we're going to move this guy. All right. Let's talk about how we're going to connect these two pieces together. We're going to be using dowel pins, which are around four and a half millimeters, and they're going to be going uh, in holes on both of these pieces. So I'm going to go ahead and draw those those holes in. We're going to create it on this plane. Let's turn off both the bodies. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick the midpoint here. We're going to come out 0.2 inches. And then we're going to draw a circle. Circle is going to be 0 0.1, say 9. We want eight of these circles along this path. So in order to do that, uh, we're going to select a circle. We're going to go to rectangular pattern. We're going to stretch this guy out. Right now, it's only three of them, uh, but we want eight. So we hit eight. And uh, we want it to go 2.1 inches, so it's evenly spaced. And then going to hit OK. And here are our holes. We're going to hit Finish Sketch. Now, hopefully, uh, this was on the right plane. So we're going to turn the bodies back on. And it was. Perfect. Now we want to use these holes to cut the bodies. And we're going to go about 522 thousandths into each. So I'm going to select the holes here. Holding down the Control button on my keyboard. Go to extrude. We're going to go this way, but we're only going to go negative 0.522. Hit enter. Now we have holes. We're actually going to do it again, but it's a little hard to do this time since there are holes here. We're going to turn off this body. We're going to turn our holes sketch on. Select these holes again. And remember that the initial plate is about an inch away. This is the one we're going to cut this time. We're going to hit extrude. We're going to come this way. And we're going to go one point to cut the other one. Hit OK. All right, turn the other body on. So we got holes on this side. We have holes on this side. They line up perfectly. We'll eventually put a doll pin in there. A tight, tight fitting doll pin. You can use glue if you want, but with eight of them, I think it'd be pretty tight. Now we're going to put a little groove for the tip of your knife to fall in. We're going to do that over here. An inch or so away from the edge is probably good. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to create a sketch. About one inch, one inch away. Uh, this gets a little complicated. This is kind of the, uh, I guess this is the spot the sketch is going to start. So I'm going to say finish. I'm just going to call this uh, start of groove. Now the real sketch I want to do here is a triangle cut in the center of this piece. In order to do that, I'm going to remove the body. I'm going to select the left plane, remove both the bodies actually, and I'm going to say start sketch. I'm going to do it on the left plane. Now, this is kind of hard to visualize because there's not bodies here anymore, maybe like that. I want to start my sketch on that point right here. Once I start it, I'm going to go back to left. I'm going to turn the body off. And I'm just going to go down uh, a sixteenth of an inch, maybe just sixty thousandths. Hit enter. Then I'm going to come off to the side about the same amount. We're going to make a 
triangle here. Okay, and uh, we'll do the same thing here. 406. All right, so here we have a triangle. We're going to say finish sketch. Now, before we turn this body back on, I'm going to select, uh, I'm going to try to select this triangle. Could be kind of hard to get there, but I'm going to move everything around so I can. Here we go. We've got it selected. We're going to turn uh, this the first body on, which is this one. And then we're going to hit extrude. And we're going to cut this guy for 1.75 inches. Hit enter. And now you have a nice groove in the, in the front facing body here that's going to be holding the edge of the knife. Now we're just going to make it look cooler. Uh, at this point, it's functional, but we're just going to make it look a little cooler. So I'm going to select these corners. Come back here, select these corners. And then we're going to chamfer. 0.9. Yeah, that looks cool. And uh, we can make these look cooler too. So these, these radiuses here, do the same thing. We'll roll with chamfer. Yeah, gives it a little bit more of an angular look. Love it. I'm going to hit OK. Maybe across the tops here, we can do some rounding. Something like that. We'll do the same thing here. On the inside, we'll do a little bit on the edges. I don't know, something like that. We'll do the front here, see what that looks like. That's not too bad. Basically just knocking that corner off. Now our color looks cooler. And I think we're just about ready to print. In order to get this into the slicer, you just come up here to export and you will select step or STL and hit export. You can see in the top right, it has been exported into my file location. Uh, you just double click that and it will open it into your slicer. It comes in as one big file that moves together. So you got to click this O button here for splitting objects. And now you have uh, two files, or at least two objects. And then you can hit the arrange. Let's print it out and see if it works on a knife. So this is what we got off the printer. Uh, the brim came off almost right away. So that's nice. Uh, we have these two pieces here. And then we have our pin stock or our dowel pins here. We just rip the brim off for most of it. Um, what I like to do on pieces like this, especially when they have a flat edge, is to take my edger here or deburr, and this will remove any leftover brim on the flats. I'm going to go ahead and do that real fast. Onto the pins, uh, the brim kind of rips off of these and you don't really need to clean this up since this will be captured inside of the stand. But I do try to get most of the big parts of the brim off so that you don't have the issues going into their holes. All right, and assembly is pretty easy. Now you could use glue in this scenario and you could put some Adaba, maybe super glue in these, but I found with the stands that I've made so far that the tight fit of the pin is plenty. You just kind of push them in there. Sometimes they require more force. And when they do, I'll just use the table and a little more force. Looks like they're all in there. Take the other side. And at this point, we'll just push the two pieces together. Now it's a pretty tight fit. I'm going to be a little careful because we are dealing with plastic here. And you can see I don't have a perfect fit quite yet. All right, that's it. 
Now clearly, I mean, you could make the size of those holes slightly larger if you don't want this type of press fit. I kind of do because I didn't feel like using any glue. And, you know, this thing's together real tight now. All right, so let's see if the knife will fit on it. It's our stand. This is our Viking sax. I'm going to go ahead and put the edge of the blade into this thing, into our, into our edge holder. Rest it there. There you go. That's not too bad, right? If you ever want to take it out, you can just pick it up take it out or put it back on display. Pretty easy. Uh, the plastic, you know, won't damage the blade or the handle. So yeah, this is a very simple solution to putting a, a knife on a stand so they can go on a shelf, maybe on a bookshelf or even little decorative shelves uh, around your home or office. Hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did hit the like button down below, consider subscribing to the channel. I'll make sure to be putting these files out there. Uh, with some links below as well so that you can download these files. I've made three of these so far. One for the Samurai Build Challenge, one for my Dagger Build Challenge, and then this one for the Sax. They have varying sizes. Uh, maybe they'll fit the knife that you have. If not, uh, you've kind of seen how I've done this in AutoCAD and you can make one yourself. I'll also provide the AutoCAD files uh, so that you can try to modify them if that's the route you want to take. Until next time, I'll catch you all on the flip side.